Yeah, rub it in, why don't you? This music is so beautiful, and I don't want to have to talk over it, but I am going to. I showed you my options there briefly. Welcome to The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, the second chapter. This game is, as you would expect, the second game in the Trails in the Sky series, but really, it and the first chapter form two halves of a whole. And in fact, they were originally conceived as one game, and then they realised that was way too ambitious for the original hardware to handle. And even split up into two, SC required two PSP discs when it first came out. It's one of the few PSP games to be released on two discs. It took a little while for it to be localised, but it was worth the wait. SC is where the story truly begins, not just for the LeBurl arc, but for the entire Trail series as a whole. Now, this is not the kind of sequel that you can jump into as a newcomer and be totally fine. This game begins pretty much literally where the first game ended, so if you haven't already, I would recommend you watch that recap video that I made. There are a few more things that I want to go over though before we start. Uh, I did show it off in the options, but uh, I have turned Retry Offset off, just like for the first game, and that's probably going to destroy me, because... So, when we start the game, we're given the option to choose a difficulty mode. Now, uh, I, I didn't even know this game even had an easy mode, but normal, I've tested this game on normal, normal's pretty fine. You should have no trouble playing this game on normal if you're a newcomer to this series. If you are a newcomer to this series, I highly recommend that you choose no difficulty higher than normal. Because while FC was a fairly easy game, SC expects you to have finished the first game, and thus, the difficulty of normal mode is roughly equivalent to the first game's hard, and it only gets worse from there. In particular, Hard and Nightmare Mode, in this game, I would argue actually approach Shin Megami Tensei or Fire Emblem Fates Conquest in terms of difficulty, especially early on. I am going to be playing this game on Hard, and that's because I want to show you just how brutal the early game is on these modes. First time playing this game, I chose hard, thinking that I could handle it. I thought it would be like Cold Steel's hard mode, where hard was pretty easy. I was incredibly wrong. Don't make that mistake. If you're new to this series and only want to experience the story, just play normal. Just do not even think about hard. But, I'm going to go for hard just to show you how painful the experience was for me on my first playthrough. And with that... Let's begin, or rather, let's continue where we left off. Okay, first I have to explain one thing. So, Trails in the Sky SC Clear Data... Oh, no, that's a New Game Plus. No, let's not do that. So, Trails in the Sky FC Save Data has been found. So... I mentioned at the end of the last game, there is a bit of a file transfer. That's actually the wrong file transfer. That was from my first playthrough, I believe. Yeah, any save file from after the final boss can be used as a transfer. So what the file transfer does is that Estelle's level carries over if it's between 35 and 40. 
You also get some items fairly early into the game as a bonus depending on how high your bracer rank was in the first one. As I achieved the highest bracer rank, I'll be getting the best possible rewards. Other than that, there are a few NPCs who will acknowledge side quests that you did in the first game if you did those quests. That's really all the file transfer does. So, with all that preamble finally out of the way, like I said, let's pick up where we left off. With unfitting Grand Cell Castle music. Clearly the music has no idea of what transpired last night. Otherwise it would not be playing this song. Now is really, really not the time. Reverse Lovers actually does have a lot of symbolism to what's going on now. It represents making a hard choice, but not really thinking about it. Making something that you think might be the right choice, but is actually the wrong one. It also represents being at war with oneself, internal battles rather than external, as well as self-love, or maybe a lack of that. All of that definitely applies to what Joshua just did. You might actually notice Cassius has switched over to his official army uniform now. And our first of many new music tracks in this game, this one's actually one of my favourites.
that was obvious in hindsight. We've actually had a run-in with at least one more agent of Ouroboros in our time. And I don't mean Joshua. There was one more that we encountered in the previous game. Not that we knew. And yes, this is what Weissman revealed to Joshua back when he restored his memories. They let him be adopted by Cassius just so that he could be a mole. And they actually knew how powerful Cassius was. They had to have info on his movements so they could lure him out of the country to put their plans in motion. Well, that's fitting, given what he called Estelle. She's blunt, but she has a point. It's a lot like her call out of um, General Morgan earlier. By earlier, I mean back in the last game's chapter one. Oh yeah, she only saved your entire kingdom. Oh hey, you actually did notice. Nice.
I, I love the name tag they give this guy. It's like the dialogue boxes are done from Estelle's perspective, and you're getting a glimpse into what she's thinking. You know, saying things like, you know, doesn't exactly help your case. It's actually official now.
<laughs> Basically pilgrims in a way. Not to mention other things. Interesting. So, more world building here. I think, I forget if that place is actually mentioned in Carnelia or not, it might have been. Yeah, a lot of the like core stuff in Carnelia is not super relevant right now, but it definitely gives a lot of insight into exactly what the church of... what the Septian church does in this setting, and what its priests are like. Kevin is reminding me so much of Saul from FE6 right now. That's, yeah, Fire Emblem Binding Blade, if you don't know. Saul is actually kind of an interesting character. If there's ever a remake of FE6, I'd kind of like to see how they'd handle him. FE6 did have a lot of characters with decent potential, who I feel like, I don't know, could use a little bit of work, but could actually be really interesting characters. Anyway, back to this game. Yes, sort of. Thank Adios for the sort of. Otherwise, this would be. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, and by disappeared, we meant. We mean, uh, he turned out to actually be a member of a secret society, he used to be a brainwashed child assassin, and now he's gone off on his own to try and fight them. Alone. A continent spanning secret society that has had conspiracies for years. Oh, and he just admitted that he loved Estelle and Estelle loves him back. So, yeah, worst possible time for that to happen. She is trained in martial arts, and we don't even know if he's trained. He's being really does she even need the help? But after all this time, we're actually back in Rollins. I believe it's been like maybe about six months since we were here last. I know it's been less than a year. Both FC and SC only take place over roughly the span of a year, so. It hasn't been that long, but it has definitely been months. This is actually our first chance to catch up with these citizens of Rollins in a long time. <laughs> He's probably used to traveling to places even less um, well off than this though. Yeah, that's exactly the point that I was making. <laughs> and with that, we have full control and we're back in Rollins. Hey, the Lind is still operating. Well, it's probably not going to get hijacked again. Also, hi, creepy receptionist. Yep, creepy receptionist Alan is still being creepy. <laughs> I 
I was about to make a joke about that, and then she goes and does it herself. Pretty typical Estelle. Anyway, uh, if we actually go into our items here, you'll see that the menu actually has a new look. But we have lost everything except the Laburl Kingdom map. We also have lost all of our armor and only have a practice weapon. Now, while you're back here, there's actually a lot of interesting NPC conversations you can have. Like, after all, Estelle's only just back in Roland after a long time, so... As you see here, you can greet everyone that Estelle knows and they all have unique dialogue for it. Hey Luke, I totally didn't read that story that you wrote that totally isn't about yourself as an awesome bracer who everyone loves... ...and who is perfect at everything. This is the culmination of days of training, doesn't exactly have the same ring to it, I'm sorry. And Luke is still being <laughs> his usual self. Well, I mean, bracers generally shouldn't be beating up kids, so... Probably a good bracer backs, backs out of something like that. It is sad how Estelle deflects a lot here, because everyone here is all just like, is all happy to see her, and... She's just... yeah... Bad things have happened lately. Oh yeah, like that'll happen anytime soon. Okay, now see these pigeons there? If I sneak up on one of them... You'll notice that pigeons actually, for some weird reason, each of them have their own unique name. Remember that, because it's going to be important for an achievement later on. Yes, really. I want to talk to Claire too, because Claire's, Claire's pretty great. As far as NPCs go, she's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm guessing Claire has a promising future either writing incredibly melodramatic romance novels or being an incredibly good journalist. Or possibly both. <laughs> and while we've got Kevin with us, we can actually go ahead and check out the Septian Church to see if anyone there recognises him. Okay, so he knows that Kevin's, um, bound for this area. That's interesting. Yeah, there's obviously a little more to Kevin than what he's letting on. And that's part of why, I'll just say it now, Kevin is actually... One of my favourite characters in the LeBurl arc. But you won't know why until the third game. So, a lot of the things that I like about him, I can't discuss for a very long time, and that annoys me. There's certainly things that I like about him that I can discuss in this game, but the best parts of his character, they don't come until later, unfortunately. Anyway, just, just going over a few conversations here. And finding out that Kevin actually knows quite a bit about Stragas. <laughs> and suddenly Estelle is more interested. Huh, I wonder if there's like an import tax on those things. I wonder if it's like buying certain merchandise from certain games that is not sold overseas. Hint, hint, I might do that a lot. Hint, hint. <laughs> Don't let Claire hear you say that. And once again... <laughs> yeah, very few people... <laughs> Uh, take Kevin seriously. 
There are a lot more good conversations here, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to do what the game wants you to and head to the Bright family home. So here we are back on the Elise Highway. There's nothing much for us to do but to check here and go to the Bright family house. And once again, there's still a turbo mode feature in the PC releases. Oh, I love this song so much. I'm so glad this song is playing again. You don't actually always hear it at this house, but it's just such a good song. In fact, this is exactly how I described the song. Yeah, this is the sad part of all this. Estelle has really deluded herself into thinking he'll be here. Thank you. 
Yes, Weissmann's memory altering techniques, he used them on Estelle there. We can't remember that we met Professor Alba back then. It's just really scary seeing that kind of thing firsthand. We'd heard how it worked on Kurt earlier, but now we're actually seeing it. All of Estelle's memories are fine, but Professor Alpha's been completely blanked out. Of course, you can erase the identity of the person you met, but it's still easy to put two and two together that that person is whoever was behind all this. And so it's time to get involved in an even bigger conspiracy than Colonel Richard's coup. Oh, yet another fantastic new song to this game. With that, our story really begins. Welcome to Estelle's new journey.